Hello friends, Susan Campfield here, and this is Mercy. Hey Mercy. Mercy needs something. I don't know what. Apparently she wanted to come on and say hello. So, <laughs> hello. Okay, why don't you go lay down? That's a good girl. No, nope, she's going to stay right here and stare at me. How are you doing everyone? Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. I hope you're doing well. My microphone's way over there. You probably can't even hear me. Hello, hello. Uh, Tuesday night, we're ready to do one of our tutorials. We're going to do a fun fold card tonight. Surprise, right? Um, hopefully you're uh, able to tune in and join me, or maybe you're catching the replay. My name is Susan Campfield. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and you are here on my Sue Stampfield uh, Facebook, uh, Sue Stampfield YouTube channel. Or you could be over on Facebook in my C Stamp Field Facebook group. I have hair on my face and it's driving me nuts. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a fun adventure tonight, I tell you. Mercy, what is the problem? She wants to say hi again. Okay. This is a dog that says, um, I need something and it doesn't involve anything in the craft room. Probably wants, do you need some food? Huh? Should we go see if Joe wants to give me some food? <laughs> so sorry, everyone. Um, so yes, we're I'm always a great adventure. Well, we have we are that, aren't we? And I appreciate y'all being here. We're going to do some fun creating tonight. And uh, you might be over on Facebook on uh, Susan Campfield Independent Demonstrator Facebook page, wherever you are. Thanks for being here. Thanks for ha hanging out with me in my craft room. Come on in, grab a beverage. Oh my gosh, you don't even have. Oh, it's over there. Okay. I've got my water. So um, welcome, everyone. So glad to see you here. Uh, uh, Mercy is a whippet. Um, so like a greyhound, Janine, but just a little bit smaller, um, the medium-sized version. So um, she's still just standing here staring at me. Whippets are really good at staring at people when they want something. Whip it good. So, um, so, so glad that you're here tonight. We're going to do some fun creating. Um, happy November. It's November 1st already. If you haven't hung out with us here in, uh, in my community before, welcome. Uh, please drop me a comment. Uh, all the comments are read and appreciated very much. I love your kind words. Thank you so much. And I love um, having you uh, along this crafting adventure with me. So I'm looking at my messy desk and um, it's how we roll around here. So I'd like to say hello to my moderator, Jennifer Walsh. Hey, Jennifer. Um, if uh, during the live, if there are comments and um, I'm not seeing your question, don't hesitate to uh, tag Jennifer with the at symbol and then type Jennifer and her name will pop up. And she will, um, thank you, Joe. <laughs> he's got the dog. Uh, he's got both dogs. Um, and so we're going to do a fun fall tonight. Let's let's cut to the chase. But um, uh, shout out to Jennifer. If you have anything, uh, do an at symbol and then Jennifer and her name will pop up and she can answer any questions in case I miss it. Because I try to, sometimes I get so engrossed in the project that I miss the questions. So we're going to make a fun fold card tonight. It's one of my favorites and it's one we did, I want to say a year ago. Um, uh, and I, you can go back and find it on this channel. We're going to uh, do it with a twist. So it's called the uh, sh the uh, corner tuck card, corner tuck fun fold card. That's what I call it anyway. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. It was a project sheet that went out to my email subscribers a year ago when I did this one. And I um, will do uh, another project sheet with the one we're going to do tonight. Let me show you where to sign up for that. You can go to uh, SueStampfield.com and click on subscribe to sign up for those free project sheets. Those come in your email and hopefully give you lots of creative ideas. So I'm going to switch to, oh, what happened? Wrong button, Susan. There we go. All right. So we're going to switch down to my desktop camera. I'm warning you guys. It's messy down here. <laughs> The creative mind is a messy mind, as my mother says. Oh, my camera might be wonky as well. All right. Well, okay. You're really going to see the mess now. We got stamps. We got blocks. We got some little notes that I want to remember. Oh, my goodness. All right. So many fun things. So, so much going on. 
So a year ago, we did this um, shaded summer corner tuck card. Let me know if that's blurry. Um, this is the project sheet that I did for that one. And we're going to do the same fold. I don't know if I even have, it's really blurry on my end. I don't know if I even have this card anymore. I, I often send cards out <laughs> um, to customers. So I doubt if I even do. Um, it might be floating around here. Who knows? Uh, but we're going to do that same fold, but we're going to adapt it to this gorgeous new product called Fitting Florets. And we might also do a gnome one because I got some gnomes hanging out on my desk that are looking for a home. And so we might just pop one of them on a card. So um, the Fitting Florets is now available. Hurrah! Uh, customers can order this now. My online store is in the comments. You're welcome to go there and order. You'll see the fitting florets pop up right away. And there is um, a number of products here. Oh, wait, we don't need to see that. That's something else came out of the printer. All right. <laughs> so the florets, you can get the entire collection, which includes the stamp set, the dies, the embellishments, another stamp set that is Christmas themed, and then the gorgeous paper. Or you can get the individual items. Uh, these two items, if you purchase the dies and the stamp set together, you get a 10% savings. So um, the paper is limited edition, as is this step stamp set, which is right here, and the, uh, the swirl dies. So we're gonna play with this fold tonight and create with this card. Uh, with this um, suite of products, uh, we've done we've done quite a bit of playing. I have a video where we made um, these fun cards, where these are the No Waste Designer Series paper. So this was a 12 by 4 inch piece of designer paper. It fits in a standard Stampin' Up medium envelope, and uh, it's a great way if you are. Um, a recovering paper hoarder and you want to use some of your stash, this uh, fold is a great way to use um, up some of that paper. And then um, with my team, we did one of the pocket cards with this. Um, can you guys let me know if the camera looks blurry to you? Because it sure looks blurry to me, but hey, you know what? It could be me. <laughs> Maybe I'm blurry tonight. Um, so we made the pocket fold that we've been having fun with as well. But tonight we're going to play with um, this other fold. So you know what? I've got a couple of other samples I can show you. I got these in the mail um, from one of my uh, demonstrator friends. This one is from Deb Snyder. Um, gorgeous with, it uh, looks like she did not blurry for you. Thank you, Selena. I appreciate that. Um, so, uh, there's some, uh, blending brush back here and, uh, some pretty ribbon on there. So beautiful card from Deb Snyder. This next one is from Julie Davison. Um, and I don't know if you can tell she's got the, the Mary uh, Melody embossing folder on there, uh, which is perfect with the, the words since there's words from a song. These are from that limited edition set. And then on the Christmas paper here, or on the pattern of paper that's kind of Christmassy, she actually colored the berry with the blends, which gives it a nice little pop of color. And then my friend Celine Kimpton uh, did this beautiful card where she embossed the greeting in gold and then has those swirl embellishments right on there. So, oops, now I just locked it. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's take a look here. And we're going to just start with doing some cutting. We're going to dive right in and get our mm -hmm. paper cut. So I think we're going to go with white tonight. Basic white cardstock. And I'm actually going to use the thick basic white cardstock. And I realize to you on your end, it looks just like anything else. Let's see if I raise my camera up to a high, then you see more of my mess. Oh, golly. <laughs> Well, I cracked myself up. Okay, so we've got our handy dandy paper trimmer here. Um, a good paper trimmer is really crucial for card making. And we're going to um, take our um, um, cardstock here and we're going to uh, cut it. This is the thick basic white. You could also use regular for this. Uh, Susan, you better not just start hacking away. You better look at your cheat sheet here. Mm, good idea. I do talk to myself when I craft. Does anyone else talk to themselves when they craft? Because I sure do. So I'm going to cut this at four and a quarter. Okay. And we'll save that other half for another project. And then I'm going to 
open this up, I'm going to rotate it, and I need to cut this at eight inches. So I'm going to pull out the extendable arm here, and I'm going to cut it at eight inches. So our card base is four and a quarter by eight. All right. So I've got my base there, and I'm going to go ahead and score that. The scoring blade is this lighter gray one down here. And I'm going to score this at two and a half inches. So I'm going to repeat these measurements for Jennifer so she can type them up for us and pop them in the comments. Um, and then I'll highlight her comment here. So our card base is four and a quarter by eight and it's scored at two and a half. Okay, and I'm just gonna fold on that two and a half inches there. And I'm gonna leave this out because I'm gonna need to do a little more cutting. So I've got that, and now I'm going to take this piece and <laughs> so your husband's asked whether you're talking to him or, or you or your own self. <laughs> um, so I have this leftover piece from cutting this down and it's um, it's three inches by I think four and a quarter. I, I need a three by three square. So I'm gonna cut it uh, down to three here. It's already three inches wide. Now it's three by three square, just like that. And let's see here. Here we go. Okay, I wanna make sure I hadn't missed a comment. Um, so Jennifer is giving us the page number for the thick basic white. It is a little hard to find. It's kind of hidden and it's on page 140 and it just has a really nice um, heft to it. And it does make your, your card feel fancier um, because of that weight and it uh, helps your card hold up better. I am putting this in my trimmer. Um, I'm going to cut it point to point so that it is a triangle. It's going to make two triangles. So I'm lining up the point so that, and I don't know if you can see it on here. Perhaps I should zoom. Whoops. <laughs> and then jiggle the camera, Susan. Um, there's a track right here where the blade slides in. I've got that point right in that track, if you can see that. So let's pop our arm back down and we're going to slide uh, the blade and that's going to cut point to point. So that gives me two triangles. I only need one of those for this card. So I'm going to set that aside. This can go away. All right. And then I have pop up the card base size there. Um, Jennifer has down for us four and a quarter by eight scored at two and a half. That is this piece right here. And then we did the three by three diagonal cut. I need another three by three piece. So this is actually regular white. Um, this piece, it doesn't have to be as thick. It's not forming the base of the card, so it's less crucial. And, and then I'm going to keep this leftover part here too to do some stamping on. Oh, you know what? I need one more piece. So I got a three by three. Mm, no, maybe I don't. Okay, I'm just going to keep that. We'll, we'll have it if we need to cut some more. Uh, yes. All right. May or may not work. Okay. All right. Let me pull all our pieces together here. So we've got our card base. We've got that corner that we made. That's going to be the, the tuck part where our card is going to uh, tuck under. This piece is the part that tucks. Okay. And let's grab some designer series paper. So this is the new one that just became available. This is the fitting florets. So some of these in this particular pattern match the dies. So one of the cards from the September, uh, excuse me, the October crafter noon is this fold, the curtain call fold card. It's uh, the tutorial still in process. Um, this stamp right here, I die cut out of the paper. So it's not actually a stamp. This image, I should say, I die cut right out of the paper. And in the paper, there are um, several that are that color and several that are the lighter pink um, so that you can do a number of cards with those. 
that's when uh, we also have a little stamping on the inside. So we've got that one. Um, I'm going to flip through here. And I've got my ooh, paper cut. I've got my Native Navy ink pad uh, out. So I'm thinking some Navy would be a good choice. So we might go with this one. Um, this one has Navy on it as well, but it doesn't have any white. And this one might be a little too busy. All right, let's try this one right here. And we're going to cut this. We need a one by four inch piece and we need a three by three inch piece. I'm going to go ahead and hide that. And oh my goodness, I've got all sorts of things up here. <laughs> all right, now we're clear. Now we're clear. I do wish um, on my software that it would allow me to move the words around, but it doesn't. So we just have to put up with them being there. So we're going to cut, I'm going to first cut a three inch strip here. And I'm going to cut it again at three. So I've got another three by three square. And then I'm going to cut it at four by one. So one inch over on this side, just do that. Move down a little bit, there we go. All right. So we have this three inch square and we're gonna diagonal cut that one as well, just like we did the white one at first. So I've got the two triangles there, and I think we can put this away for now. All right, so let's bring in our card here. And we have this white triangle. This piece is just going to be adhered right to this white triangle. It's just going to make this uh, more stable. A little add a little heft to it. Actually, I had a lot of heft because I'm using the thick basic white here. So that is going to go in the corner. And then this piece is going to go right here. And then I need a scrap to do some die cutting on. So this is where I'm unsure how to proceed. We have two options here. Um, let's explore both of them. All right, I'm going to start by stamping my flowers in Night of Navy ink. And I'm going to stamp it right here. Hey, Jan, you're not late. <laughs> I'm going to pop that up. There are our dimensions. I'm going to go a little higher so you can see me stamping. So I'm stamping this floral bouquet in Night of Navy ink. So pretty. And then I'm going to take a blender pen. I had one out. Honestly, it was right here. So this is what happens. I, I Do you do this too? I go to craft and I got my ink pad there, right? Then I need my dimensionals for something. So I get my dimensionals and I set them down. And then I'd be like, where is my ink pad? It's vanished. Okay. Yeah. I know I lose stuff all the time. <laughs> and what do we say when I find something again here at Sue Stamfield? We say found it. And then we get to take a drink. It's a little game that we play. So uh, I haven't found it yet, though. What am I looking for? Can you remember now? Oh, yes, my blender pen. Well, guess what? I have more. Who knows? Maybe I actually put it away. Doubtful, but possible. So I'm just going to grab another one. I'm going to grab a juicy one. Let's see. Ooh, that's not a that's not a good one. All right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's on this desk and I'm pretty sure we'll find it. But found it. Oh, wait, you know what? I did just find it. Look, there it is. Right there. It was under stuff. <laughs> found it. Take a drink, everyone. Um, I just have my water and I'm not drinking Stampin' Mist. So hmm, it's across the room. I'll grab it in a minute. Take a drink for me, will you? All right, let's 
hide that comment here. So found it. Cheers, everybody. Are you constantly looking for something too, Kimberly? Ah, oh, welcome to my world. All right, so I finally have located my blender pen. Now, this Knight of Navy ink is a water-based ink. So I can actually take my blender pen and turn the uh, ink into sort of a paint. And I'm just going to fill in the centers of those flowers. Like so. All right. So that just adds a little something, something. You don't have to do that. It's just beautiful stamped um, without doing that. And then we're going to grab, oh, well, now my, now it won't go away, right? We're going to grab our die cutting machine here. This would be a perfect time to be using the mini machine, but I didn't get that one out. We don't know why, but this would totally work with the little machine. Um, and I'm going to go to my dies here. These are the fitting uh framed florette dies and there is a die that matches this image this is also actually the same die and the same image that's in the paper that i showed you here so that's how i die cut at, i die cut that out right out of the paper and this time we're going to stamp and die cut because you know the paper only lasts so long the stamps will last you for forever right Okay, I cannot tell if I'm on there well, but because I'm not straight over it, you guys are. All right. Another way you can color in that flower center is with a um, Wink of Stella glitter brush. If you want to add a little pizzazz, a little sparkle, that would be... Um, another option for you so this one is more just a like a plain paint i'm gonna put my top plate on so just to remind those of you who are newer to die cutting we've got our um, number one number two number three and then a second number three on top and sandwiched in between those two number threes is our uh, stamped image and our die and we'll just crank that through and this is the stamp and cut emboss machine. We also have a mini uh, stamp and cut emboss machine, which would work fine for this narrower die. All right, there we have our flower cut out. So pretty, right? I'm gonna raise this up. <laughs> oh, Pam can't find her silicone mat. Yep, take a drink, Pam. <laughs> Maybe it'll help you find it, right? Okay, so here's our decision I want to make. Um, we have our pretty flower. While we've got this handy, we're going to go ahead and die cut a frame. Just so happen we have a bunch to choose from in here. Um, just slide that back a little bit so you can see these. So these two are frames that cut out frames, obviously, Susan, and they also cut out the inside ovals. So you kind of get four, you get double. I get, when I cut this, I'm going to get two shapes that I can use. When I cut this, I get two shapes I can use. This one actually doesn't, it only cuts the little hearts um, in the paper. So there's no, um, no actual oval cut when you do this one. It just cuts out all those little uh, hearts in an oval shape. So we'll play with that one a different time. Um, boy, this is thick. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see how this die cuts. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's just a pretty intricate die. So, well, I guess we'll find out, won't we? And I'm actually not going to use the big frame. I'm actually just wanting the oval. So let's see what that looks like. Oh, it cut beautifully. Look at that. All right, so here we've got the frame. Now I have a very scarred up plate uh, on, on my, can you see how, um, yeah, this one's been getting a lot of love. And when it gets scarred up like that, they do tend to, to hold on to the plate. So sometimes you got to kind of pop them off. So I've got my two pieces. This is what I was saying. You get one die, you get two pieces that are usable. I'm actually going to be using this um, frame, okay? And I happen to have on my desk um, this 
already cut. Don't know why. I guess I was going to do something with it and I didn't. So let's just use it. So this one is the same thing. You cut the frame and you get two pieces that you can use. So pop these away. I like ovals too. And I'm not sure if we're going to use the ovals. I'm hoping that you will vote and let me know which would be a good way to go here for our card tonight. So this guy will not leave me alone now, right? I'm putting it away. What a shocker, Susan. Put it where it belongs, in the drawer, and then you'll be able to find it next time. Yeah, yeah, I know. I get so busy creating that I don't want to stop and put things away. Um, now, when I cut this frame and it cut this oval, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's a little embossed edge around, which is really pretty, but I'm going to cover it up. <laughs> but it's okay because I'm going to cover it up with this pretty frame which also has an embossed edge so it's all good so I'm going to to attach this because it's such a narrow frame I'm going to switch to my multi-purpose liquid glue this is where we want to do a thin line is just fine a dot is a lot and a lake is a mistake so I am drawing my line of adhesive around, and I'm not sure if that's showing up on camera very well. Let me try zooming in to see if you can see that. I got it a little bit thicker than I like, so I'm going to go back to my nozzle. I'm not going to squeeze the bottle, though. I am just lightly holding the bottle, and I'm using the nozzle to spread out where the glue is a little bit thicker than I'd like because I don't want it to ooze. Um, out the, I don't want it to squish out the sides when I put it down. Does that make sense? Because then I have this blob of glue on my project. Not what I'm after. I just want this to stick. So I'm just sort of spreading around that glue. If you get a whole bunch, you can actually take a little scrap of paper and do that same thing. It seems like a really good time to have a scrap paper under this, doesn't it? <clears throat> I'll probably make that happen. I can make that happen. Okay. Actually, a really good time to put my silicon mat under it. <laughs> right, Pam? Uh, you just ordered it, Donna. Um, yes, it's uh, you're going to have a lot of fun with this. All right, I'm still super zoomed up. Let's go out a little bit so you can still see. Um, if you did this on your silicon mat, you wouldn't be getting glue on your paper. But it's too lazy to get out of the drawer, and I did it crooked. Dang it. I had a little oval squishing out. Probably would have been better to flip this over. Do it from the back side. Okay, there, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, so we've got our oval here. I'm not 100% sure if we're using our oval, but now we've got options. So we're going to go back to our card here. And we have our white paper and our triangle. We're going to adhere those together. You can use the multi purpose glue for this. You can use it. Ah, haha, <laughs> found it found it. I couldn't find it when I first looked. Um, this is uh, the seal adhesive. So everybody take a little sip of your beverage of choice tonight. Whatever you happen to have handy. We like to hydrate here frequently whenever I lose things. So um, we've got a sticky triangle, and <laughs> really sticky, and we're going to adhere it, uh, the designer series paper triangle to that. And let's go back to our card here. So we've got that card base, we've got our triangle, and we want this triangle to be raised up because we're going to be tucking um, something under it. So I'm going to go to my dimensionals. Now you could use your uh, regular size or your minis for this. I'm going to use the minis. They're going to give me lots of extra room. So I'm going to put one mini in the, each point of the triangle. You do not want any dimensionals here because that's where our paper is going to tuck in. So we need to keep that available. Um, again, you could use the bigger ones. You just want to be careful they don't get too close to that middle. I'm going to err on the side of caution by using the minis and then I, I know I'll have lots of room. You also could cut your big ones in half to get a skinnier uh, sticky surface. So if you can see that, there's now a little raised um, piece under a raised spot under there um, so that our uh, item can tuck in. And I say item because I don't know which one we're doing yet. So this is that three by three square that we cut. Um, where is our other? Ah, found it! <laughs> our other piece of designer paper. That's the one by four. 
All right, take a drink. I'm going to go get my water because I'm getting thirsty. It's not far. Ooh, uh-oh. Hmm. It's pretty empty, actually. All right, so we're going to go ahead and adhere this. So get some adhesive on there. The other side of this paper is really pretty. And then we've got two options, and I would love to have you let me know in the comments which one you think we should use. So we've got our pretty flowers here. So we could put the flowers on the oval frame and tuck it under to hold the card closed. Or we could put the flowers popped up on this three by three of white and tuck it under the frame to hold the card closed. So let me know in the comments if you think we should use the oval or the square. And while you're voting for that, I'm going to go ahead and put some dimensionals on the back of this. Again, you can use the big ones or the small ones. It doesn't matter. Oh, is it cold there, Peggy? You need a hot drink tonight? Good idea. What is your favorite hot drink of choice? I love hot tea. At night, I drink decaf. I like cinnamon tea. Um, but I also love hot chocolate. Okay, so far, we're getting a few square votes. So far, the majority have voted for the oval. It's pretty close, though, actually. All right, we're going to go with the oval for this one. But I, <laughs> look at this, guys. I meant to get one, and it sticks to my nails. <gasps> I'm going to go ahead and put the four on there. We'll use the oval for this one, but I think... I think I might have a square one on my card, on my desk somewhere if I can find it because I was playing around with this earlier. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. All right. Good. We'll do the oval for this one and then I'll show you what it looked like in the square and you can see them both. How about that? Best of both worlds. So we're going to pop up our bouquet here on our oval and I'm going to adhere that down so that I want to make sure when I stick it on that it least part of it is going to tuck under that because that's going to hold the card closed but I don't want to be I don't want it to be so hard <laughs> for the recipient that they can't get the card open right so I want it to be um, tucked under a bit and with the square it's pretty easy um, you just line it up so that you've got about a fourth of an inch here and tuck the corner under with the oval, I am discovering where we want to be. I think we're going to want to cross over this piece just a little bit. So I'm going to put some adhesive here. Bunch of adhesive. Just slather it on there, right? <laughs> Don't want that piece falling off. And we'll pop that on there right there. And then it will open like that. And then we'll have an inside sentiment. So I've got two that happen to be on blocks. Um, if you can let me know which one you would like on our card, I would show you the box if I could find it. Here it is. Found it. Mm -mm. Found it. Take a drink. <laughs> uh, wishes for a beautiful birthday. So vote for wishes or vote for special for a special person on a special day. They're both nice. Well, all the sentiments in here are nice, but the two I have on blocks ready to go are wishes or special. So let me know in the comments which you would prefer. And wishes, 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 special, special, special. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's like, it's a tie. Uh, oh, wishes just went in the lead. All right, we're going to go wishes. Let's go with the wishes. Here they are. They're on a really huge block because all of my uh, block Ds, which it would perfectly fit on, are in use um, with other things that I did. It was too lazy to clean them off, so I just put it on a big block because why not, right? And so inside here, I'm going to stamp my message. I want to make sure it's not out here where people can see it. I want to make sure that it's going to be covered up. Here we go. So I've got wishes for a beautiful birthday. 
And of course, we absolutely, I still feel like I'm uh, a little bit uh, zoomed in there. Um, we absolutely could add some embellishments. Um, seriously. Seriously, I lose a lot of stuff, you guys. It's really ridiculous. Okay. Uh, maybe I put them away. Probably not, but maybe. So we'll get out some more. So I've got the, okay, no, I didn't put them away because this package isn't even un, isn't even opened yet. So they're floating around on my desk somewhere, but that's okay. We'll open a new package. It's all good. We can, we can say found it with this one. <laughs> um, so this is... Use it. Yes, you're right, um, Janine. Janine is saying that if you use the um, the for a special person on a special day, you could be making this card in advance without knowing what the actual event is going to be. And then, you know, it would cover weddings, anniversary, you know, um, graduation, really a lot of different things. So good point. Good point. It makes it a little more versatile that way if you don't know for sure what you're going to be using it for. Um, so I'm going to take some of these iridescent pearls and just add them around our oval. And I'm just using the big ones. Don't know why. Just in the mood. <laughs> and there, whoops, you need to move now. Put you over there. There we go. So there we have our card which is for a beautiful birthday and then I do have one here that I did uh, with the square if you want to see what that looks like this one doesn't have any embellishments on it yet um, let's see what this one would look like with a piece of ribbon on it I do love my ribbon and this one has again the wishes for a beautiful birthday this one I actually I put a square in there. I don't know why. I could have just stamped on it, I think, because I had one cut. <laughs> and uh, it was ready to go. It was available. So uh, let's see what we think a ribbon looks like on this. Grab some ribbon scissors here and chop this off. All right. And tie that in a knot. All right. So just to show you what ribbon would look like, um, you don't have to do ribbon. You don't have to do embellishments. You could leave it however you want. There's a lot of options with this one. So there it is with the ribbon, and I would still probably add some embellishments on this because I can, right? <laughs> and I do love my embellishments. Um, so there's those two versions. I also did the same card in navy. So I should say the same card, the same designer paper, the same pattern, but in navy. Um, with the navy, um, I felt that the flowers got a little lost with the strength of the paper. So instead I did the words on the front and then I just stamped the spray, which is right here in Night of Navy. And I did add some embellishments to the center of those flowers and on the side there. So um, we've got uh, the spray again on the inside for just a little extra interest there. But I also think this card would be really cute with the you know it's here I know it's here <laughs> oh you guys are so patient with me hey look I found the uh I found the iridescent pearls found it but that wasn't what I was looking for so of course this is another um, pattern of paper that's in that pack. If you wanted to go with a, a little more summery look, a little lighter uh, look, you certainly could do that. Um, but we're going to grab, should we do it a gnome one really quick? I think it would be cute. Let's give it a try. All right, I'm going to close this ink pad up and... 
we'll do a really quick gnome. I guess while I have my paper trimmer handy here, we'll go ahead and die, and, uh, die cut, uh, angle cut this three by three square with the snowflake paper. I'm just again, making sure I have the points lined up in the track. I apologize, I have a ring light here and it does reflect, so sometimes it is hard to see. Oh, Peggy's tea is ready. Let us know when you come back, Peggy, what type it is. Jennifer Walsh, the coordinating flower, the lighter blue, is it balmy blue? That's a really good question. Let's look at the package. Balmy blue is one of Jennifer's favorite colors, I believe. Favorite Stampin' Up! colors. Yes, Balmy Blue, Blushing Bride, Crushed Curry, Evening Evergreen, Night of Navy, Polished Pink, and Soft Succulent. So this particular uh, one is, is uh, Balmy Blue. And then we're now switching to the other paper. I've, I've switched to the gnome paper here. I've got mushrooms on the back. So this is the... Um, Storybook Gnomes is the name of the pattern paper, and the gnome can be die cut right out of the paper. So I used my little gnome die that came with the gnome set, and I just die cut that right out of the paper. And we're going to do the same card, but with the gnome, because we can, right? So earlier when we cut the first one, we had a leftover piece. So we're gonna turn that leftover piece now into a second card. So I'm gonna to go to eight, the eight inch mark. This is already cut at four and a quarter. So again, our card base is eight by four and a quarter. We have this piece that came off. That's gonna be three. And I'm gonna cut it down so it's three the other way as well. So it's forming a three by three square. And I'm also going to cut this on the diagonal. So I'll line the points up in the cutting track and pop that down and go ahead and cut that point to point. And then we're going to cut a three by three square. Just grabbing this scrap that I had left over from our first card because it's the perfect size. And while we're at it, Let's cut a two and three, or do I need to do that? I don't need to do that, Never mind. I was cutting uh, something for the inside greeting and I don't need an inside greeting, so there we go. In fact, I don't really need this because we have a leftover corner from that first card. So I did, however, forget to score this. So let's do the scoring. Who remembers what we scored the first one at? It was four and a quarter by eight, and we scored it at two and a half inches, right? Two and a half inches. If you didn't know there was going to be a test. Uh, Mary wants to know if you can get a replacement blade. Uh, you, you have helpful grandsons that lost the replacement blade. Uh, yes, you can get a replacement blade for this. You can go to my online store and just search for the word blade. There's not a lot of things that are going to come up under that name, and it should pop up for you. So let's fold this. But you do want to make sure you have this version of the trimmer because um, we had a different one in the past. So make sure it looks the same as this one. All right, so we've got that creased, and we've got our triangle here. And we're going to put this on here. And uh, the replacement cutting blades are on page 155 in the annual catalog. Oh, the replacement scoring blade you were looking for. Boy, they used to sell those, and I'm not sure. I think they do still sell them. I don't know. If it's not in the catalog, probably not. They used to. All right, so I'm going to adhere the storybook gnomes paper to our corner. And... Grab our dimensionals. How many things do you suppose I lost since we did the first card? <laughs> ah, so yeah, let's cover it all up. Okay, we're gonna peel those backings off. And actually I do need that three inch, where did I put that three inch piece? I 
I didn't think I needed it and I was wrong. Okay, so we've got that. We're gonna put this piece right here. And then I'm gonna track down that three inch piece that I just tossed over across the room here. Found it. <laughs> Let's see if I've got anything left in mine. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I went down the wrong. <laughs> there, I muted you while I coughed some more. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever joked myself on live video before. Let's hope I don't ever do it again. <clears throat> so I'm going to adhere this onto my card <clears throat> while I try to talk. <laughs> oh, I cracked myself up. Okay. And then we're just going to tuck that right under that flap <clears throat> to hold our card closed. And then we have our little gnome right here on the front. How cute is that? <clears throat> I think I'm going to put big dimensionals on the back of him. And then I've got room to add a greeting. And I will finish that up later and I'll post it in our Sue Stampfield Facebook group tomorrow. I'll leave room for the greeting, but I'm going to put him down here, I think. So I'll finish that one up later and post it in the group. But you can see how you can use this fold with any designer paper, any image you want. Even die shapes will work with this fold as long as you just make sure they can tuck under that corner. So there we have the corner tuck fold card from tonight's video, yay! <laughs> We made it through. Ah, Jan says if you call Stampin' Up, 1-800-STAMP-UP, they will fix you up with a replacement scoring blade. So good to know. Thank you, Jan. <clears throat> yeah, it was mostly ice, but I found just enough water to choke myself. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm going to switch the camera here. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Um, you like the navy one best, Rosemary? Uh, it's a little more pop of color, right? So um, it's nice and dark, and it really looks nice with that paper. So, so many choices, right? I hope that uh, Fun Fold is helpful for you. It's super easy. And one of the nice things about it is it's easy to do two at a time because when you cut that long piece, you get two out of the sheet. And when you cut your triangle, you get two out of that. So um, so it's, it's one that's um, easy to um, mass produce, I guess I wanna say. So, or at least make two. Oh, you are so sweet. Thank you for your kind words. Apparently I said found it six times tonight. So uh, I've done worse. That's not too bad for me. That's about average, right? <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here. A quick reminder, I will be sending this out um, uh, in the project sheet email probably end of this week, early next week. So if you want to subscribe to that right there, suestampfield.com, click on subscribe, and then you'll be able to print out this project sheet and walk through step by step. So thank you all so much for joining me tonight. Uh, have a great rest of your evening and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.